Good morning, friends. Good morning. Welcome to worship this Sunday morning as we gather together to hear God's word and to receive his blessed sacrament. It is a joy to come together, and I thank you for all pushing into the liturgy this morning, as this is our only liturgy this dreary fall holy weekend. Um, as we come forward for Holy Communion, all baptized Christians believe in Christ's presence in the sacrament are more than welcome to communion. And so, friends, it is a good day to be together, and as we begin, I invite you to rise for confession and absolution. We follow our liturgy as printed in the orange tank. We gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and in the presence of one another. We pray together. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake our God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now to join in the singing of our gathering hymn, hymn number 688 in the Red Hand.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Amos. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground, they hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their, vo their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe, and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as, he had, as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord. And Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you. 
As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go and sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Good morning. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and from our Lord Christ Jesus. Amen. Shocked? perplexed, and astounded. We've all been there, haven't we? An encounter that leaves us a little confused. An event that just seems absolutely unbelievable. A perspective that we've never perceived. I was in Fenwick Island, Delaware recently at Harpoon Hannes, one of my favorite little getaways. The first moments of a treasured weekend with my universally agreed better half, reflecting on 35 years of wedded bliss. But as we were wrapping things up, I was shocked. The bill came. And something was very, very wrong. I swore they must have charged me twice. But no. On closer inspection, I found the price for 10 wings had more than doubled since our last visit and were now $17 for 10 wings. Shocked. Perplexed. Astounded, and maybe a little irritated, too. Apparently, I'm told there's something of a wing shortage these days. Shocked, perplexed, and astounded. Maybe we visit the circus with kids. We watch the magic show. We see that tall man on his stilts. We see six or seven clowns crawl into one car that's no bigger than half a VW bug. Shocked and perplexed and astounded, we watch the evening news. The scenes have become perpetually emblazoned in our minds, just like those towers from 9-11. 
Crowds driven by pent-up anger and frustration and rage erupting into threatening and unruly mobs. Some destroying storefronts and violating private property on one side, and others desecrating hollowed spaces and threatening the lives of public officials on the other. We witness things we've never seen. We hear things that confuse our ears. And we are shocked, perplexed, and astounded. As we hear St. Mark tell us about a nameless young man's encounter with Jesus today, we hear of an encounter, a holy encounter, that leaves him, as we have all been from time to time, shocked, perplexed, and astounded. He had just asked Jesus what seemed like a fair and maybe even humble question. A question which sought instruction for living this life in such a way that it would be worthy of an inheritance of eternal life down the road. But the Lord's response to him left him shocked and perplexed and astounded. St. Mark tells us, as he walked away, from the Lord grieving. What Jesus proposed would turn what this young man thought he knew about life completely upside down and inside out. What Jesus was teaching flew directly in the face of the way he understood the world to be organized, the way the community and his life was ordered and governed. Jesus' words laid challenge to his priorities and the principles by which he managed his affairs and the way he thought about and tended his stuff. When Jesus tells the young man with many possessions that the path to walk, if he would journey to eternal life, involves selling his possessions and giving the proceeds to the poor, well, it's just too much. Jesus is proposing something which to many ears, to his ears, to his disciples' ears, and maybe even ours, is just unimaginable and outlandish and just off the wall. Remember, the objects in question, the man's many possessions, have long been understand and understood to be signs of divine pleasure. Tokens of God's blessings and approval, indicators of his righteousness and worthiness, rewards for faithful, devout, and wise choices. His abundant possessions give him position and standing in his community. They reflect his competency and his worthiness. Be they rings or fields or houses or crops or herds or servants, these plentiful possessions give him status and privilege comfort, power, and influence. His plentiful possessions, which Jesus tells him to sell and entrust to the poor, have indeed claimed a place at the very heart of his being. So when Jesus instructs this man with many possessions to venture and journey to eternal life by a path unencumbered by things, by wealth, it's no small wonder that he and those who heard him were shocked and perplexed and astounded, or we would be too. Listen closely, for this is not a call for a little more charity, for sharing a little more generously than we may have done in the past. No, this action, this direction, would completely change each and every step and aspect of life. The very place where he lives, the people with whom he had access. We're talking a complete redefining of life in a huge and unimaginable way. We're talking about the need to completely rethink the place possessions have in our lives the role they play in the way we live. 
rethinking the way we so regularly divide our lives and our relationships, even the human family itself, along the lines of the haves and the have-nots. This story raises the challenge to rethink the assumption that abundant possessions are equivalent to divine approval, and its opposite, that limited resources imply divine disregard. In the end, friends, we're challenged to hear that Jesus' invitation to the man with many possessions is his challenge and his invitation to us as well. His challenge and invitation to trust his better way and discern what it is that comes between us and our desired destiny to fully live as beloved and redeemed children of God. Maybe even to dare ask the question of ourselves, of what do we cling to so firmly that keeps us from claiming in a full way the new and abundant life which God fashions for us? And maybe even what might tomorrow look like if with daring faith I were to give Jesus greater input into the life and direction of that tomorrow. Be clear, Jesus says. Such renewal and such new direction doesn't come naturally and certainly doesn't come easily. In fact, it's a lot like trying to lead a camel through the eye of a needle, he suggests. But rest assured, friends, as impossible as it seems and sounds to you and to me, such renewal will be accomplished, yet not by human engineering and design, but by the divine and merciful graces of God. For with God, Jesus reminds us, as shocking, perplexing, and astounding as it may be, all things are possible even restoration for the fallen, new life for the penitent, life for the dying, comfort for the grieving, and yes, salvation for the likes of you and me and this often obstinate world in which we live. For this is the life, the new life he promises when we were made heirs and inheritors of God's abundant and never-failing love. As he washes us in the font and grafts us into the life, death, and resurrection of his risen Son, sealing us with the Holy Spirit, marking us with the cross of Christ. This is the new life he promises every time we confess our sin and encounter his merciful gift of forgiveness and reconciliation. This is the new life he promises each time we are counted among the blessed who are called to taste and see the goodness of the Lord in the sacred breaking of the holy bread. For Jesus, the one who suffered, died, and rose, whom we worship and praise, is all about the impossible, isn't he? Restoring the inheritance of God's fallen children giving himself to others and calling others to share his new life. And as shocking, astounding, and perplexing as it may be, taking us and all that which has fallen and raising us up to life with him. Amen. Friends, at this time we rise, and we join together in making profession of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the church, the nations of the world, and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the church that through the Spirit we may be a community that lives confidently in the Lord's good favor. A faithfully and faithfully bears the name of Christ and shares his gracious word of salvation with the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have left home and family for the sake of the good news. We remember missionaries, pastors, bishops, deacons, and those who continue to give leadership to the ministries of the church and this congregation, that they may find joy in their service and give of themselves with devotion and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the children and youth of our community and around the world, that they may be blessed by families, teachers, and mentors who care for them well and who will guide them in good and faithful ways. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world and for those who lead the peoples of creation that loving the truth and respecting the dignity of young and old, men and women, rich and poor, greater peace and unity might guide us into the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the inspired wisdom and compassion of those who serve in healthcare professions, for those who devote themselves to research, for the benefits that we have received through effective vaccines, and for the willingness and charity of neighbors who mindfully care for one another, that tensions and mistrust will give way to a fuller commitment to tend others in life-giving ways. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the lonely, the oppressed, the neglected, and the forgotten, that all creation might experience the mercies of God and the gentle, renewing compassions of neighbors and friends. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, especially those who are dear to us, that light eternal might shine upon them as they rest in peace from their labors and struggles of this life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the ministry of St. Teresa of Avila and for the witness of all the saints through the ages. May her devotion to Christ, her love of the poor, and her confidence in times of adversity inspire us as with her we seek to follow the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercies through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Take a moment to share that peace. Quarter, right?
Let us rise. Let us pray together. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Almighty and merciful God, you are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world, to fulfill for us your holy will, and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, we may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all of your saints. For to you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. to receive you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
Friends, we rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto everlasting life. Amen. With this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, being gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and bring you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
wonderful to be together on this Sunday morning. We have our children and youth Sunday school beginning immediately following this liturgy, so right at 9.30 a.m., a little earlier than usual, they'll begin uh, the children down in the social room with Miss Liz, and then the youth, I believe, will be in the high school room up here on the second floor. We have, for this week, a few things planned. Our book club is meeting to read Martin Luther by Martin Marty, or to discuss Martin Luther by Martin Marty, tomorrow at 6 p.m. in the parish house. Our women of Trinity are gathering Thursday at 6 p.m. down in the social hall, and we're having a faith, fun, and family night this Thursday also at 6 p.m., but in Trinity Hall. And so there's still time to jump into those groups, but please do sign up on the sign-up sheet down in Trinity Hall as we make preparations and get ready for those days. Um, also, next Sunday, we have one of our most popular events of the year, the All Parish Hayride out at Ridgetop Orchards. It's a time to ride through the orchards on a bunch of big wagons, uh, eat some apples, and uh, roast some hot dogs by the fire. I believe there'll be some materials for making your own scarecrow as well. It's always a wonderful event, but again, please do sign up for that if you're able to be with us. And finally, one of the greatest blessings of Trinity is often the wonderful people that God allows us to live alongside through this community. Well, this weekend, one of those wonderful people, John Beamer, passed away. Um, I know that comes as a surprise to all of us. Um, and I think most of us have a story in some way or another of a way that John touched or inspired us and modeled wonderful faith and generosity and always taking advantage of the opportunities and the blessings that God puts into every day no matter what. Funeral services now are planned for next Saturday. There'll be a visitation from 10 to 11 right here at Trinity and then a funeral service at 11 a.m. next Saturday morning. So if you'd like to be with us, um, I, I know this is a day where we gather together and we remember the wonderful blessings we've shared with him and we commend him and lean on the promises that God has shared with him all his life. Uh, today we have his sister Martha with us as well as one of his long-term caretakers, Barb. Um, but uh, keep the whole family in your thoughts and prayers as we go through this week and days ahead. Are there any other announcements for the good of the community? Thanks be to God.